Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to go over a way too early 2022 MLB power rankings. And make sure you comment down below with your power rankings. Do you agree or disagree with these power rankings? Let's get right into the video. So the Atlanta Braves defeated the Astros in six games in the World Series. Not many people predicted it, so it's kind of a surprise. So in 2022, is it going to be another surprise team or is it going to be a team that is obvious that should win the World Series. Let's talk about it. So starting things off with number 30, the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pirates occupied this space a year ago with pretty much every power ranking and probably all season long. And while they did manage to avoid the worst record in the majors for a second straight season, the 101 losses indicate that progress remains slow. The one good thing about the 2021 season for the Pirates is Brian Reynolds rebounded from a poor 2020 to have one of the 10 best seasons among NL position players. Which, I mean, if that's the best thing that happened all season for this team, yikes, that's not good whatsoever. Next up at number 29, we got the Texas Rangers. They ended the season at 60 and 102, and they lost 100 games for the first time since their two seasons in old Arlington Stadium back in 1972 and 1973. John Daniels, the president of baseball operations for the Rangers, promised that they will be active in free agency. So we'll see what happens in the 2022 season and see if they can improve the team. Next up, we got Baltimore Orioles. This is a team where it's just, there's not much to explain about them. It seems like their pitching is getting worse. It seems like their offense isn't improving that much. And they're just not going anywhere the last couple of years. So we'll see if anything changes, but it seems like they're always around the top 20 to 30. At number 27, we got the Washington Nationals. Yes, the team that won it all in 2019 is ranked at 27 a couple years later. That, that's pretty sad. But without Mad Max, Trey Turner, Kyle Schwarber, I mean, come on. This team can't be ranked any higher. They're not a good team. I'm just putting it out there. The only two real stars on this team, Juan Soto and Steven Strasburg. Other than that, this team doesn't have much hope in 2022. At number 26, we got the Minnesota Twins, a team that kind of entered 2021 as World Series contenders and the season honestly didn't go anywhere as expected for them, including at the trade deadline, they traded one of their best players, Nelson Cruz. So this team honestly took a step back and I think they're more in a rebuild mode right now so we'll see what happens for the twins but yeah they're I mean hey top 25 ish not bad I guess at number 25 we got the Chicago Cubs I mean really another team that there's not a lot to say they got rid of Anthony Rizzo they got rid of Chris Bryant they got rid of bias what more is there to say? I mean, 25 is generous. This team does have potential with players such as Patrick Wisdom, Kyle Hendricks, but it's going to take a couple more years until they're in the top 10 or even the top 15. And for that matter, even the top 20. So top 25 isn't bad. We'll see where things go for them in 2022. At number 24, we got the Colorado Rockies. Honestly... It's a surprise with how they began their season, at least. It's really a shock that they weren't a total disaster in 2021. They ended at 74 and 87, which is a respectable record, I guess you can say. I mean, it's better than Baltimore and a couple of other teams on this list. So there's that. Hey, A for effort, gold star for, you know, playing, I guess. I don't know, man. But the Rockies, they got a good future. They got some prospects, but number 24. Honestly, I feel like number 23 for the Arizona Diamondbacks is very generous with 110 losses. Yikes, man. I mean, that's a lot of losses. I mean, there's not a lot to say about that. Um, and the fact that they're in the NL West with the Dodgers the Giants, the Padres, 
Oh man, it's going to be so hard for them to compete, but the future could be bright for them. They got a couple decent looking guys, Carson Kelly, Kentel Marte, Pavin Smith, Josh Rojas. They got a couple good guys to build on, so we'll see where things go, but 110 losses, number 23 is pretty generous. We'll see what the future is. At number 22, we got the Philadelphia Phillies which honestly I didn't expect to have a good season but Bryce Harper had a MVP season which honestly he might win MVP in the NL and they ended at 82 and 80 definitely a bounce back season and it definitely looks like their future is bright especially with Bryce Harper and they definitely could be a World Series contender next year and not to mention they have Zach Wheeler, which is an NL Cy Young contender. So their future is definitely good with Bryce Harper and Zach Wheeler. We'll see where things go. But I definitely feel like, if anything, they're a playoff contender, maybe a World Series contender as well. At number 21, we got the Kansas City Royals. This is a team that has a really good offense, I feel like, with Bobby Witt Jr. joining the squad pretty soon, I feel like. And they also got guys like Nicky Lopez, Perez, obviously, Carlos Santana, Hunter Dozier, and a couple of other guys. But their pitching is still a big question mark. A lot of their pitchers are like number four or five starter, but definitely not ones or twos. So we'll see what happens as far as their pitching goes. But offensively, I think this team has a really good future. And I think they might be a sneaky team in 2022. At number 20, we got the Miami Marlins. Now, I feel like this is a team that's the opposite of the Kansas City Royals. The Marlins need some offense and the Royals need pitching. The Marlins have a really good pitching squad and I feel like it's only going to get better in 2022. They have guys like Trevor Rogers, Pablo Lopez, Edward Cabrera, Jesus Lizardo, Sixto Sanchez. I mean, this rotation is stacked. And really, all they really need is some good offensive pieces, which they can really find in free agency if Derek Jeter and the front office puts the money in. So I think the Marlins are going to be a really good team and maybe sneak their way into the playoffs. At number 19, we got the Cincinnati Reds. They went seven years without making the playoffs, and then in 2020, during the shortened season, they finally made the playoffs, but they lost in the wild card against the Braves. And now Nicholas Castellanos is likely opting out of his contract. It's going to be tough for them, especially because they have one of the worst bullpens in the MLB. And they're also looking at the future of $74 million in future payroll to two third basemen who hit a combined of a 201 average. So the Reds might have a good future, but they got to do a lot to bring this team up and hopefully make the playoffs a little bit more often than seven years. At number 18, we got the New York Mets. This team had a brand new owner that came in, they got Francisco Lindor, and they started piecing all of these guys together to make a super team in New York, and it fell apart. They won 77 games, they lost 85 games. If anything, people expected the record to be swapped, but I mean, they really underperformed, and the future is bright. They just got perform better, I guess that's all you can really say. And now we got Marcus Stroman, No Syndergaard, Baez, and Michael Conforto are all free agents. And keep in mind, Jacob DeGrom last pitched on July 7th. So their pitching rotation is a massive question mark. They got to make some moves and they got to do it fast if they want any chance at a World Series. Well, Cleveland had their first losing season since 2012. But still, an 80 and 82 season isn't the worst because they can really turn that around in 2022 with just a couple of pieces. And they did re sign Jose Ramirez, so that looks really good. They got Tristan McKenzie, that looks like a pretty good pitcher, and of course, Shane Bieber as well. So we'll see what happens. Of 
Obviously, Shane Bieber did miss some time due to a shoulder strain. So we'll see if that really affects him in 2022. But overall, I feel like the soon-to-be Guardians might have a good future and finally will win a World Series because in 2016, they lost to the Cubs. Just got rubbed that into, you know, the Guardian fans. But we'll see what the future holds for them. Okay, let's be honest. At number 16, we got the Detroit Tigers, a team that was really a pleasant surprise in 2021. They ended the season at 77 and 85, a much better record than expected, especially with the way that they started the season. They got AJ Hinch, a really good manager, and it looks like a bunch of rumors that Carlos Correa is going to go over to the Tigers to reunite with his former manager and if so then you better watch out the tigers look like a pretty good team and also obviously they got miguel cabrera future hall of famer mr 500 home runs in almost 3,000 hits that man is really really good so if he gets going again in 2022 i really have a feeling the tigers are a really good team and could go into the playoffs. Another sneaky team, possibly. At number 15, we got the Seattle Manners. They missed out on the playoffs by one game. They finished second in the AL West, and they finished at 90 and 72. No one expected the Mariners to have a season like this. And by the way, if you haven't already, go check out a video on how the Mariners almost made the playoffs. I broke down their season and how they turned it around. But they definitely have a bright future. They got Logan Gilbert, which probably looks good. Matt Brash might be good. And George Kirby. They could both be impact starters pretty soon. Not to mention they also have Jared. They also have a couple of other prospects. And Abram Toro as well. And, I mean, yeah, Carl Seager might not come back in free agency. Which, it really doesn't look like he will. But... They should be able to pick someone else up in free agency that really should help this team. Maybe one or two bats and maybe one or two one and two starter pitchers. Otherwise, they have a really bright future. And I think for sure that they will make the playoffs in 2022. At number 14, we got the Oakland A's. It was kind of hard to put them over the Seattle Mariners because I feel like the Mariners do have a better team. But at the same time, the Oakland A's are also better. It's just mix and match. They both are really good teams, I feel like. And they're both in the same division. The AL West is beginning to become a stacked division like the AL East. But anyways, they have a really good pitching rotation with Frankie Montas and Sean Manea. And they also have Matt Olson, which is a beast coming off a 39 home run season. I mean, they have a really solid team. They just need a couple extra pieces here and there to really put a team together. But they finished at 86 and 76. Obviously, that's a really respectable record. So we'll see what the future holds. Hopefully, they pick someone up in the offseason and have a much better year. At number 13, we got the LA Angels. A team that I feel like can't struggle much longer. They got Mike Trout. They got Anthony Rendon, Shohei Otani, Jared Walsh, Joe Odell. I mean, they have a god squad here. Probably the best team on paper in the MLB. But performance-wise, it's just not there. I think what they really need is pitching. I mean, if you think about it, they got the offense. But they really need pitchers and they need Mike Trout to stay healthy. But I really feel like this is their year. I feel like they're going to finally make the playoffs and Shohei Otani is going to be incredible. We'll see what happens in 2022 though. At number 12, we got the San Diego Padres. This is another team that I feel like is very similar to how the Mets are. I mean, they came into the season where most people expected them to at least make the playoffs at the minimum and win the World Series at the most. And, I mean, obviously that's all you can really do if you have expectations. But they got Fernando Tatis. They have a bunch of other guys. Uh, Blake Snell came in. Darvish. I mean, this team on paper looks really good. 
but they just underperformed. They finished the season at 79 and 83. And again, the NOS is becoming a stacked division. It's going to be hard to compete in there. But I feel like the Padres next year have a shot. They just got to hope for the best. And remember, they just hired a Bob Melvin. So that might help them out a lot. So the Cardinals ended the season with 17 straight wins. And then they lost in the wild card against the Dodgers. But they haven't had a losing season since 2007. So that's pretty insane. Their future is definitely bright because they really have been really good since 07. So I don't see them being any worse than they have been. I mean, 90 and 72, that's a pretty great record. And I feel like it's only going to improve. I'm predicting 95 plus wins next season. And remember, Tyler O'Neill had a pretty great breakout season. Not to mention, Harrison Bader is a really good player. So I'm excited for the Cardinals' future. It definitely looks really good. At number 10, we got the San Francisco Giants. Now hear me out. I know 107 wins, the best team in baseball. But there's three reasons why they're number 10 and not in like the top five or number one. Number one being the lineup was exceptional, but old. So regression from at least some of the position players has to be expected. I mean, Buster Posey just retired. Evan Longoria is aging. And there are a couple other guys as well. So, you know, there's going to be regression. We'll see what happens. The next reason is because, yeah, the rotation, the starting rotation was exceptional. But Kevin Guzman, Alex Wood are free agents. So if they don't come back, that's obviously going to hurt them a lot. And finally, the bullpen was exceptional as well. With a 2.97 ERA, the best in the majors, but ranked 22nd in strikeout rate. So repeating that will be difficult. And we'll see what happens. Obviously, they need to have a really good offseason if they want to improve. And also keep in mind, the 2018 Red Sox went from 108 wins to 84. 2013 Cardinals went from 100 wins to 86. The 2013 Red Sox went from 97 wins to 71 wins. Do you see a trend here? Great teams take a major step backwards the following season all the time. So, I don't see the Giants winning 100 plus again, but I definitely see them being contenders as long as they go out and get some pieces in the offseason. At number 9, we got the New York Yankees, which I just want to rub it in all my Yankees fans' faces. They were straight out of the playoffs, and speaking of, you should go check out the merch in the description down below. Straight out of the playoffs merch. If you don't like the Yankees, you should totally check it out and pick yourself up a shirt. Anyways, the Yankees were 92 and 70, tied for second place in the AL East. And I really feel like they have a shot in 2022. They just obviously need a good offseason because besides Stanton and Aaron Judge, their offense is trash. I'm just saying that, Yankees fans, you might agree with me, honestly. I feel like they're going full rebuild mode, but they're not going to rebuild like most teams. They got money. They're just going to grab their wallet and throw money and just poof, have a good team. But is that really going to happen or are they going to have to money ball it like the Rays do? I don't know. It's going to be very, very interesting. They have to have a good offseason, but regardless... They're at number nine because on paper, they have a really good team. And on paper, they really should be number one. But regardless, number nine, there we go. At number eight, we got the Boston Red Sox, a team that we all thought was going through a rebuild this year, but ended up tying for second place and leading most of the season in first place in the AL East. They got Devers, Bogarts, JD Martinez, Alex Verdugo, Bobby Dalbeck. I mean, they also have Hunter Renfro, Kiki Hernandez. I mean, their team is stacked, not to mention their pitching is pretty solid as well. So I feel like this team is really good. 
and I feel like they have another shot this year. Obviously, they lost in the ALCS to the Astros, but I definitely see them going at least to the ALCS again next year. We'll see what happens though. At number seven, we have the Houston Astros. I know they just made the World Series. I just don't feel like they're that good anymore. Now, the reason being is because they're likely going to lose Carlos Correa, Zach Greinke, and they might even lose Justin Verlander. And keep in mind, they also lost Garrett Cole. So a lot of their key pieces are gone and that's only going to keep happening to them in the future. I mean, as long as players leave in free agency, but I feel like they're number seven team and definitely a top 10 team, but I don't feel like they're in the top five. I feel like they have a ways to go and I really think that they need to make some moves in the off season. Maybe not re-sign Carlos Correa, but find someone else. Maybe Trevor Story. At number six, we got the LA Dodgers. Another team where it's like, yeah, 106 wins. They did not make the World Series though. And you also have to keep in mind, Clayton Kershaw is now a free agent. Corey Seager is a free agent. Kenley Jensen is a free agent. Chris Taylor, Max Scherzer, Trevor Bauer. I mean, we don't know about him yet, but Cody Bellinger, will he hit again? Man, there's a lot of question marks with this team. A lot of guys leaving in free agency this offseason, but they do have Mookie Betts, Trey Turner, Max Muncy, Walker Bueller. I mean, they do have pieces still, but at the same time, they're losing like half of their really good guys in free agency. So we'll see what happens, I guess. But they really need to make some moves this offseason like they did at the trade deadline if they want to get further than at least the wild card this year because the Giants are still a good team and the Padres might just get better. So the Dodgers better make some moves this offseason. At number five, we got the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, they made it to the NLDS. They got knocked out by the Braves. But they have a really good team. Their future is bright. 95 wins on the season. Not many people expected that. And they were really a sneaky team this year. I mean, obviously, they got Yelich. They got Freddie Peralta, Brandon Woodruff, Corbin Burns, which is a Cy Young contender, Willie Adamas. This team looks really, really good. And I'm really excited to see their future. And that's why they're number five. At number four, we got the Toronto Blue Jays, a team that I really expected to go far this season. 91 and 71, not a bad record. They got Boba Shett, Vladdy Jr., Teoscar Hernandez, Jose Barrios, and obviously Cy Young MVP caliber pitcher Robbie Ray. And they also have Marcus Simeon. I mean, they have a really good team. As long as they get Robbie Ray and Marcus back in free agency, they should be good to go. And I forgot to mention George Springer, by the way. But overall, the Toronto Blue Jays have a bright future. Their players are only going to get better, such as Vladdy Jr. and Bo Bichette. They're only going to get better. So I definitely feel like in the next few years, they're going to be in the World Series. At number three, we got the Chicago White Sox that ended the season at 93-69. and 69. I like that amount of losses, by the way. Um, they had a really good season, I feel like. And they have a roster mostly of young stars. And many of them missed a lot of time with injuries in 2021. So, with them coming back in 2022, I definitely expect this team to be a little bit better. As long as they stay healthy this time and maybe pick up one offensive piece, I feel like this is a really good team for the future. At number two, we got the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, are you surprised they're at number two? They won 100 games for the first time in franchise history, the most wins in franchise history. They were first place in the division with three teams that had at least 90 wins. That's pretty crazy. Not to mention, Wander Franco was exceptional 
in just a couple games that he played and he didn't even play a full season what is he gonna do in his first full season and then they got Josh Lell they got Vidal Bruan and of course they got a bunch of guys that were injured that are coming back and they also have a really good starting rotation such as Shane Boz, Shane McClanahan, Luis Patino. They have a good team and I say one, maybe two guys in free agency, which it's going to be hard for the Rays to do that. But if they pick up one or two guys in free agency and have a good offseason, this team it's going to go all the way and win the World Series in 2022. And finally, at number one, we got the world champions of 2021, the Atlanta Braves. I mean, is there any surprise why they're number one? They definitely won the trade deadline. I mean, the reason they won the World Series is because of the trade deadline. Ronald Acuna Jr. missed the rest of the season and they went out and they replaced Ronald Acuna Jr. Yes, it took a couple of extra players in one, of course, but they got the job done. They went 88 and 73 on the season, but they were more of a 95 plus win team, I feel like. And they had a breakout season from Austin Riley. I mean, he was incredible in the postseason. Charlie Morton was pretty good. We'll see what happens with him after having a pretty bad injury in the World Series. And the final thing that I want to mention about the Braves, what's gonna happen with Freddie Freeman? But guys, that's gonna do it for this video for the power rankings. Uh, yeah, it's super early. I know, obviously we still have the off season, but hey, this was just for fun. I enjoyed making this video. And if you enjoyed watching this video, you should click the like button. It's free, why not? Show your support and subscribe down below for more content just like this. I have a lot of off season content coming soon and go check out my other channel. I do Madden 22 franchise videos on my second channel. So definitely go check it out. Subscribe if that's something you're interested in. And other than that guys, thank you so much for watching this video and I will catch you guys in my next one.